Hello, I'm Dr. Basil Considine. I'm here from the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we're going to be talking about summarizing and analyzing interviews. Now, interviews are a time-honored way of collecting data from individuals and groups. You can have a structured interview where you come in with a list of questions and you only ask those questions. You can come in with a semi-structured interview where you start with the questions and you can ask follow-ups and range wherever it takes you. And you can have unstructured where you, it's just a free discussion. And which type you choose will largely depend on are you trying to get consistency about the results. If you ask a question differently, people may respond differently. Hence, many people will use a structured interview questionnaire where it's all specified in advance. You may be interested in something that is more organic, and so you have free-flowing dialogue or something in the middle of the semi-structured where you come in with a starting basis, but it can go in other places, other formulations, questions, clarifications. So with the, any interview, there is a purpose. Now, sometimes it's just to learn about things. Sometimes it's to address a problem. Sometimes it's to teach and a few other things. And we'll talk about some of those today. If you're new to the Online Writing Center, we work with students at multiple stages of the writing process. You can be just looking at the assignment instructions and wondering how to interpret it. You can have a partial draft, a complete draft, something you've gotten feedback from the instructor on and you're looking to improve or to improve for next time. All of these are great reasons to come to the Writing Center. We work with students in just about all of ACU's online programs. Now, we have students coming to webinars like this who are downloading templates from our website, looking at sample papers, explanations of different topics, and making appointments to get feedback. Now, if it's just a quick question, send us an email at onlinewritingcenter.acu.edu and we'll get back to you. And if it's something that happens to be of a longer length that we recommend a appointment, we'll, we'll let you know. But if it's just a quick question, how do I format this? Does this make sense kind of thing? Is this what they're referring to? Just fire those away and we'll get to them as quick as we can. If you are looking for detailed, in-depth feedback on your writing, recommend that you sign up for an appointment. And you start by going to my.acu.edu and under the links of resources list, that drop down, you select Online Writing Center. And from there, you'll end up at a landing page where you see instructional videos, how to, all that stuff. But when it comes to signing up for an appointment, there are two major types that you can sign up for. The first is asynchronous, meaning you schedule time. By the time that rolls around, you upload a copy of your paper and any special requests, look at it, and send you feedback generally within 24 hours. Say 4th of July weekend might take a little bit longer because 4th of July weekend. But we will always get it back to you in time for you to be able to review the feedback and integrate it before the assignment is due. Now, perhaps you have a lot of questions that you want to answer and expect it might be beneficial to have something of a back and forth format. That's fine. What you would want to do is to go ahead and schedule a real-time appointment. It could be via phone, it could be via Zoom. Zoom is great if you want to see the screen to see the text, but maybe you're more of an aural learner and you want to be able to focus on it and not have that visual distraction. If so, just request a phone appointment and we'll go from there. The basic process is you sign up for an appointment using the WC Online Scheduling System that you get to from my.acu.edu. By the time your appointment rolls around, you upload your draft to Canvas, just like you would for an assignment for your classes, and then we send you feedback via email, unless it's a real-time appointment, in which case you'll get the feedback in real time. Now, we do recommend that you check out our Writing Webinars archive page and look. If you scroll down past the schedule, you see this tab guide where you can select your program. In this case, we've singled out CONR because we're using an example assignment. And you can see all of the courses and assignments that we have direct tie-ins for different webinars. So for example, the CONR 617 course, we have several webinars that tie in with that now. And so if you scroll down here, you see under CONR 617, all of those tie-ins sorted by the week of the course. So we update that as the semester goes. You know, the calendar list will show what's coming up and what's past, but the tap guide here will always show what's available right, right now. So I strongly recommend checking that out. And with that, uh, you'll see me referring to the APA course paper template later, 
We have a YouTube channel for watching our recordings on the go, and a blog where we explore different topics. With that, let us talk about reports as a genre, because in this case, we're looking at a sample assignment where an interview is being conducted with the goal of generating a report. So we'll look at reports as a genre. Then we'll look specifically at this assignment for Connor 617, week four's assignment six, the faith leader interview report. And then we'll finish by talking about how to start using the instructions to outline and draft your paper and about certain phrases that will help convey the information you need and show how you know the things that you know. With that, let's talk about reports. Now, with the report, let's start by thinking about what goes into that. What will you usually find in a report, any report? Well, usually there's going to be a description of some one or more situations or events, something that has catalyzed the report. Now, this could be something that is more abstract, like, oh, this is a year for the organization. We're reporting retrospectively on that. It could be what we are anticipating, so something that hasn't come to pass yet. It could be a more discrete event like, oh, we had a party, a conference, a sales event. And along with that description, there comes an interpretation. And you get to pick. Is this going to be your analysis? Is this going to be through the lens of a particular idea, a rubric that's been prepared, a guideline series from the parent organization, whatever it is, an interpretation guided by a particular approach. And where reports tend to be differentiated from essays is in the focus on the facts or research results, if you're doing research, at presenting those factual information to the reader and then evaluating them. And so it's less of a, you know, let, let's convince you about this more, let's tell you what's going on. Uh, and, and so it's more objective than subjective in many cases. They usually also have a discussion of outcomes or future courses of action leading into recommendations and then any conclusions. Okay, what should we do knowing this? If you think about a financial report, if uh, you've been losing a lot of money, that's important to do something about sooner rather than later. So there'll probably be some recommendations and one of the conclusions will be, we need to be more careful about the money or we need a financial cushion or something of that ilk. If it's a report on a, an event and you see, oh yes, customers were very attracted to that, we need to follow up, well then, <laughs> the course of action, it's clear. So what are some of the things that make a report a good report, a strong report? Well, that focus on facts is very important. It's also very important to make sure that you define your audience, that you know who you're writing for, what do they need to know, what are they interested in? Because bad or meandering reports tend to have information that there's not a clear reason for it being there. So it just mucks the whole thing up and it's harder to see the things that you actually care about and need to know. Another way to convey that is to have a clear and logical structure for the assignment that we're going to be looking at that is provided in part by the assignment guidelines, and that you are in the report that you are setting out and analyzing problems and situations. Now, in some cases, the problems may be more everyday or pedestrian, but I think everyone will agree that keeping the lights on and food on the table is an important thing. So it may be more regular, may be recurring, may be always going on, but that doesn't mean we don't want to approach how are we meeting those things? How are we rising to the problems? How are we resolving situations? And so a strong report should also be helping the powers that be, whoever is the stakeholders at making decisions, facilitate their decision making. And you might say, well, hold on, how many decision makers are there for my church's financial report? Well, everyone who's contributing financially is making a decision to contribute. So if they see that the organization is in good health and that their money is being spent responsibly, that's a good thing. They see they need to rise to the occasion to support the organization in a difficult time. That's also a very important thing where there are decisions about making money or contributing time and other resources. So as a illustration, let's go ahead and take a look at a parish report. And this is from a Canadian church called Holy Child Parish. And you'll see that although it is in many ways more informal than you might expect in a business report, it does have all those things we we're talking about. 
Now you should see a PDF here with the Sharing Our Hearts and Hands with the Parish Annual Report from the Holy Child Roman Catholic Parish. And if we look through this, we see that uh, we have the minutes, because that's the format where this was presented in a meeting, virtual or otherwise. And we see we have written reports from the different parish groups. So one of the ways that this has been organized for clarity and to identify the specific audiences is by dividing it into different sections. Oh, the finance section, the liturgy section, social justice committee, education, spiritual growth, so on and so forth. And that's partly about that knowing the audience that we were talking about. Because while the different parishioners are probably interested in the parish as a whole, a lot of people might be more interested in one area than others. So having that section that they go to for greater detail is really helpful. And dividing into these different functional entities is a clear and logical structure. So let's take a look back at that again. I mentioned that facts are very important in reports. And here we have in the parastatistics on the left hand side, we have a detailed breakdown of how they spent their money, where the different expenses were, and we even have the original budget compared to the COVID thing. So you can see that the they revised their budgeting in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic, and that we have presented the actual. So they've acknowledged, hey, the goalposts shifted a couple times. And so here are the numbers we were working with. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to see here what happens in the transformation of things. So we see that some things like the um, office expenses ended up being a lot higher than anticipated for the last year. On the other hand, the uh, expenses for the hall, like cooking, groceries, supplies, repairs, are much less than they were. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing where if we want to get that overview, we see exactly what's going on here. We see the people are interested, okay, what's going on in our parish? We see, oh, so many baptisms, so many communions, so on and so forth. Uh, more marriages than funerals, sadly. I'm sorry, more funerals than marriages, sadly. But, you know, th we have this overview here. Those are the facts. That's not uh, a bad thing. It's very clear if you know what you're looking for. But for the groups that want to know, hey, what is going on here? Uh, for, let's say, liturgy, we have the breakdowns, the reports for each section. Let's take a look now at the uh, Social Justice Committee report. Now, this is written more narratively, but if we look at it, we say we have an inspiring quote. We have kind of our lead-in sentence saying, okay, 2020 challenged everyone and Social Justice did it as best we could. Okay, that gives you a big picture thing. And we see now the details. Okay, what did they do? Okay, food baskets, monetary donations, giving tree, uh, other organizations they donated to, volunteering. All right, so although it is more informal, it is giving us all the things we need to know about, okay, what were you doing in social justice? We've got a nice list of things. It's divided by topic uh, or focus and, or project. If we look in the right-hand side, we see that uh, we have reports on the activities for different things that have been discontinued or continued during the pandemic. And then we have other things here, and they've appended the pastor's remarks and the minutes. Now, if we just look back here at the uh, annual general meeting, this is a page on the left, we see we have that each group was asked to give a report. And so that table of contents, and we're starting kind of things for the parish as a whole, going down to specific things like the men's club and the Knights of Columbus. So it's following that same order. So it's the order has been conveyed. It's clear. It's logical. Great. Now, there are many genres of reports. And so for the next part of our discussion, we're going to look at the assignment instructions from the sample work from CONR 617, where you're asked to report on an interview with a faith leader. And the for or mat will be in APA style, and so there's certain ways that you refer to it, but we're looking at the same priorities. There's a purpose for this. More on that in a moment. So this is coming from Connor 617's week four, module four, the assignment number six, 
the Faith Leader Interview Report. And this is coming out of the Managing Conflict in Churches course. Now, the instructions begin with the uh, note that you're supposed to interview a local faith leader about a conflict that they have managed in a local congregation. So not far, far, far away from you, not some different country, something that is quote unquote local, which uh, if we say same metro region is generally a good way of defining local, uh, but something that in some way, shape or form is culturally, nationally or otherwise similar to what you have experienced. If you look at the instructions, we see that the paper should be 900 to 1,000 words, which is roughly three and a half to four pages of body text, not counting the title page, not counting the references. And you have a series of five prompts to answer. What type of conflict was experienced and who were the parties involved? How did the faith leader respond and what was the outcome? Uh, were there any anxiety triggers? How did they balance separateness and closeness? And was the leader a bit able to remain a non-anxious presence? <laughs> Very important. Sometimes people try and help and uh, they <laughs> don't because everyone gets more anxious because they're anxious. Uh, what signs of maturity or immaturity were present in the congregational system? And then if you were consulting the leader on how to manage the conflict, what would you recommend that they do differently? And what would you recommend that they do the same as they did in the actual event. We have a general reminder about different formatting, of which the main notes here, I would say, are to have a heading for each prompt and to not quote the sources. So there should not be direct quotes. Uh, you should not be a quoting directly from the person you interviewed. Give us a concise summary or a paraphrase. So if we look at the rubric here, we see that we have a little bit of a consolidation of the different uh, criteria here from the bullets. But uh, take a moment to look at how much credit is assigned to assessing the maturity of the congregation, which is easy to gloss over and cover just in a couple sentences, about how much credit is assigned to identifying appropriate recommendations, including what to do differently or what to do the same, and also that 20% of the grade goes for, is it formatted well? Is it in the target length? Is it written well? So that's 20%. That's the difference between an A plus and a B minus. So definitely there is a bit of polish expected here. So don't rush. Don't wait till the last minute. Just start working on it sooner rather than later. And it leaves a lot of time to review and to simmer on things and make sure you're getting full credit by meeting all of these. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and grab a copy of the AP course paper template and talk about citing the sources, because especially since the instructions refer to anxiety multiple times, it would be a very good idea to be grounding your interview analysis in the course readings for this, which happens for this week to include from the Steinke textbook Congregational Leadership in Anxious Times. So uh, go ahead and if you haven't already, grab a copy of our APA course paper template because we're going to be talking about how to format this. Now this particular source, you can see here in the lower right hand in the dark black text, I've included a uh, APA reference entry for that. Note that although the other Steinke text just has his first name listed, this one has the middle initial, so Steinke PL. And so that would be, if this is the only Steinke work you're citing, Steinke 2006. Now, if you are citing and referencing both publications, it does get a little bit interesting. Because although I'm pretty sure this is the same Peter Steinke, the fact that it was published with one with the initial, one without, means that we need to treat it a little bit differently if you are citing both. Uh, if you're going to be just citing one of them, then it's Steinke 2006, no matter which one it is. But if you have both of them cited in this paper, then we're going to need to have a differentiation to, so you can key which one, which Steinke 2006. Oh, it's Steinke P. So you would include P period Steinke 2006. Or for the PL one, PL Steinke 2006. And so this is a slightly unusual case, especially since it's from the same publisher, but 
that's just how it is. So just be aware of that. And if you happen to be citing both of them, because you're integrating things from week two into your analysis and your report, then that's fine. Just make sure you reference them and cite them accordingly. Some phrases that might be helpful as you are writing up your interview and interview analysis. Things like the pastor stated uh, to identify the name. Okay, so-and-so identified this thing as an issue or said that this was an event that took place. Uh, to, if you're summarizing, and you can use phrases like a recurring theme in the remarks was blah. And you can relate it back to the literature with phrasing like this aligns with the characters of this thing identified by this author and date. Or based on this procedure, this theory, this model, I recommend that blah. And you contextualize those recommendations as well with the literature. According to author date, this should be addressed using blah. Or according to author date, this is counterproductive because blah. All right, so let's get down that APA course paper template now. Now, I have here a blank copy of our APA course paper template, and you want to start by filling in the title. Make sure it's the same on the title page and on page two. Does not need to be fancy, does not need to be poetic, just needs to be informative and reasonably concise. So if I just call this church leader interview report, that is not fancy, certainly not poetic, but it is descriptive and it is to the point and concise. So let's go ahead and um, just take out all this placeholder stuff. Same thing with the references, and uh, you know you'll you'll know as you prepare this whether you're going to be using both sources or not. But either way, if you are going to be using this week's reading, and I would recommend it given the instructions on anxiety, make sure you, that you add that to the template as well. So let's go ahead and grab that. And as you can see, I have copied and pasted in the reference here, and it. it as we go along, I can add citations in the outline notes saying to cite this. Now I've gone ahead and copy and pasted the instructions here. And let's take a look back at uh, what those instructions tell us to do. These include saying we should have a subheading for each prompt. So let's go ahead and add that. So I'm going to add an introduction bullet here just as a note and who is interviewed. Background. And you can expand on that list as you think about it. But we have this introduction, okay, what are you talking about here? And now we want to have a heading for each thing. So I can go ahead and then use the built-in styles for the template. And that you can see this is now formatted as an AP level one heading. And I'll do that here. And AP level one, great. And here we have the recommendations. Now, you can certainly use a variety of different texts here, but I would advise you to be descriptive and concise. And then when you see something that has multiple questions like this, break this down into different bullets so you can answer with your notes. Uh, you can even go in when you have the interview and have these Print it out so you can start penciling little notes as you go or if you record it as you're watching the recording to write things in here because there are some things where as soon as you start putting it in okay this is going to be a yes or no thing let's say yes and then say okay how did they do it and what are the advantages what's the important of that so you can start writing that up 
Now, based on the uh, reading here for the module, you're probably going to be citing Steinke 2006 as you're analyzing that. And that's fine. Uh, you're giving yourself a model for this, for filling in the details. And just as an example here, let's say a church conflict. Uh, Now, these days, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice's Jesus Christ Superstar was done by a lot of church groups of many different denominations. It was somewhat controversial when it came out, and sometimes still is. And, you know, whatever the conflict is, okay, tell us, uh, you know, was this a little one? Was it a big one? Was it a interpersonal? Was it, in this case, congregation splitting? Uh, it seems kind of important. <laughs> and then you can describe the groups. You don't need the explicit names, but row of roles is uh, helpful. You can start taking notes. Let's say against, you have a long-time parishioner and director of four. Basically, by taking notes on this, you start laying the basis for writing easy sentences of showing exactly was involved because you have all the information laid out. Let's say that we had the youth minister, the uh, sacristan, and we'll put the pastor there for the purpose of having an argument. Okay, the parties for this were the youth minister and the sacristan, those against were the longtime parishioner and director of whatever service, and the pastor. Uh, the congregation split roughly evenly along these lines. And so now we have Okay, we have a description of the conflict, we have the inciting incident, the parties involved, and now you can talk about what did they wanted. Now, any disagreement, there may be things in common. So you're certainly not linked to just saying how they are different how they are same. And in fact, that's something that comes up in the rest of the uh, analysis that you're going to be doing. So let's talk back to how you know these things, because you are getting this through the lens of an interview. So let's look at this bullet here. According to Pastor Joe, called the Pastor Joe, could be Pastor Jane, something else. But according to Pastor Joe, oh, uh, there were significant anxiety triggers. Okay, all right, so that's our topic sentence. We need some evidence. For example, at the and then And so you're telling us how, what you know and how you know it. According to Pastor Joe, blah. Pastor Joe stated, etc. And so just keep in mind that identifying where the information come from, come, even if it's secondhand through Pastor Joe or Jane, uh, that's very helpful for knowing what you're referring to and what lens might be involved. Now, you can talk about things that are missions, or say, well, maybe uh, <laughs> describing their role all differently than it was, favorably or unfavorably. Uh, I, they just said that they just resolved on their own, but I know that they were more involved. So there, there are many ways that you can introduce this information, but we want to be grounding it in, okay, what happened, what are the lessons, and uh, what should be done? Because if we look at this and we come back to those instructions, we see if you are consulting the leader on how to manage the conflict, and this read that as if you are consulting with, like offering advice to the leader on how to do this, what would you recommend? And uh, 
that includes praising things that went well and giving constructive criticism. So let's not be mean, <laughs> but let's be specific. And that will probably include making reference to the literature and using some of these phrases like, according to this, this should be addressed by doing what? Now, if you're feeling that you don't have quite enough to write on, you've answered all the prompts and you're not quite in that 900 to 1000 word ballpark, then I would suggest that you take a look back at the course and program objectives. You know, what are the planned outcomes here? What are you supposed to be doing? Or what is the course empowering you to be able to do or do better? And I've extracted a couple things from the syllabus here, but you can see that one of the program learning outcomes here is demonstrating an understanding of biblical peacemaking principles. Things like this you can certainly go into, and when you are looking at your conclusion saying, okay, well, they did apply this or they didn't apply this well. Uh, and so if we're going to give recommendations based on this, what does that suggest? Or if we're looking at the tie-ins for this module, we see, okay, uh, the importance of being able to balance emotional fusion and emotional cutoff. That sounds like the kind of thing you might be able to discuss in this assignment. And uh, identifying the benefits of being a church leader with a non-anxious presence. If this church leader was an anxious presence, then yes, absolutely, that would be something that you might want to talk about for a suggestion. So keep these in mind as you do the reading. Keep this in mind as you do the interview. And I don't think you'll have terribly much trouble finding enough things to write about for a good four pages and complete the length requirement for this assignment. That's all we have for today. If you have any questions, feel free to send us a question at onlinewritingcenter at acu.edu or sign up for an appointment for feedback. You can find the template you saw me using, you can find sample papers, a complete guide to the webinar, and more on the Online Writing Center website. That's it.